Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Benny Atruna, and welcome to Disco Elysium, or, to give it its original title, No Truce with the Furies, because why have one of the best names in video game history, when you can have two of the best names in video game history? And as for why we're looking at this one today, well, we don't really get this sort of thing anymore. You know, a top-down, isometric, narrative-heavy, hardcore RPG... Aside from a bit of a resurgence in the late 90s, of which Fallout was a very big part, of course, we just don't see much of this thing anymore. But, we do occasionally get the odd one sneaking out, and, uh, oh yeah, I've been looking forward to this one since I saw it at, I think it was EGX a couple of years ago. Yeah, this has been looking very, very exciting indeed. Though, I have been warned ahead of time, this one is odd, like... Very, very odd indeed. Like, let's just flip in go with it. Right, first need to set my Impa stats. So, Intellect, Psyche, Physique, and uh, Moterics. Are you sure that's a word? Anyway, that's just like, agility. Okay, well, let's get rid of that physical strength and all of that mobility business. No, 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 no. I'll definitely be wanting, uh, yeah, some raw brain power, but also uh, sensitivity. So, uh, okay, like charm, but like, not charm, and vaguely implies psychic powers, so let's go for psychic powers. Alright, now I need to set a signature skill, and, uh, yeah, there's, there's some interesting ones here, like, electrochemistry, good for party enthusiasts and cops who need lightning. I mean, that's, that's certainly an option, yes. Okay, I'm liking the sound of visual calculus that lets me be a forensic scientist and a tactical fighter so that I can actually figure out what's going on in crime scenes so the world will reveal its secrets to me. But, there's one I definitely can't resist. I was saying just a second ago, this game's supposed to be a bit odd. So if it's gonna be odd, let's lean into the flipping odds. Here we go. Inland Empire. Hunches and gut feelings. Dreams in waking life. Specifically, at high levels, Inland Empire animates the inanimate, you'll have conversations with your clothing, conversations that may change the course of the investigation, if you're not thrown in the loony bin first, of course. So, yes, we'll be going for that! There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Based on the specialization I just chose, I really hope that's my socks talking to me right now. Okay, so as it turns out, I'm a filthy man in socks and pants. Good, 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 good. And we can just wander around. As I say, this game's odd. Let's just go with it. Figure out what the heck's going on here. Though I'm guessing I was probably a bit on the, uh, the drunk side. This magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. That would explain a few things. I'm doing some good detecting right now. Okay, and just like Fallout, I can highlight things I can interact with so I can see what I'm supposed to be doing. All right, then. What's going on here, precisely? Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. All right. This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on, uh, rolling empty. So, uh, I got drunk, and presumably, unless I find someone else here... I did that. Hello over there. Right, one green shoe. I think I need to, yes, dress myself. My first mission is to dress myself. That's how we're tutorialising the game. Okay, let's take some pants here. Good, pants straight on. Still lacking one shoe and... Oh, this is going to be trickier, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so uh, there's something up there. Ceiling fan. The fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Okay, so, oh, Inland Empire, or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. I'm so glad I chose Inland Empire. Apparently, I'm just going to go around characterizing and assigning motive to random inanimate objects. This is brilliant. So... Okay, savoir faire, medium 10, grab the tie. That's a skill I didn't specialise in, and that's nice. We are actually dice rolling right now. So, okay, we're rolling two six-sided dice to figure out what I can and can't do. Well, logically, if I, yeah, pull on the little thing that controls the fan, the fan turns off, then it's easier to get the tie. The blades come squeaking to a halt, 
it should be easier to reach the tie now. Yeah, let's actually just um, turn on the light to it. Oh! Okay. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. I mean, maybe I should just leave them on. No, no, no. Bring it on. It's fine. Oh, that's... Okay, I've literally just lost half my entire health bar for turning the light on. I am apparently very, very hungover right now. Okay, I've now got a plus three to reclaiming my tie because the fan is turned off. Oh, we are in proper hardcore RPG territory here, guys. Right, let's go for 72% roll. Though, if I mess this up and accidentally bang my head, I might just die. And there we go, I've now got a horrific necktie, absolutely beautiful. However, my logic steps in and says if it's your friend, why was it up there? Who ties their friend to a ceiling fan? Maybe this thing is dangerous somehow. Okay, logic, me and you need to have a chat, because I feel like you going along with this whole characterising the necktie thing is not logical. Well, my Inland Empire steps straight back in here, an ominous foreboding feeling fills you as you look at the tie. I mean, I can understand that. I absolutely hate wearing ties. I mean, one of the best things about working for myself from home is you don't have to wear a flipping tie. Okay, let's just head over here to my jacket. All right, let's just put on a jacket. That's some good stuff. So, yep, take that. There we go. And apparently there's, yeah, a broken window right over here. Okay, what is this? Visual calculus, do an easy check to assess the damage. Okay, here we flip and go. That is a check success. The shards face outwards. Whatever broke this window came from inside. So yeah, presumably that was me. And uh, did I break it with my own hands? Visual calculus. There is scarring. None of it recent. So in which case, yeah, we need to go outside presumably to figure it out. Unless the little marks underneath the window right there was, say, drops of liquid from something with liquid in it that I threw out, like, say, a beer bottle or something. And, uh, visual calculus, more likely a projectile than a held object. It's too large for a bullet, too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking at something heavy and larger than your fist. I'm gonna guess a bottle, except, hang on, would that itself have broken and, yeah, left some form of mark? Could have been some booze while I was getting drunk, yes. Aha! A single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. So my other shoe is going to be downstairs on the street. We'll do it in a second though, because yeah, we want to actually get my shirt to go under my jacket first. I think that's my shirt there, isn't it? Hopefully that's my shirt. And uh, what can we learn here? Yep, a shirt. Great. And also, is there a corpse in the bathtub? No! Bottles! Good! That's way better than a mysterious corpse. So we've got a mirror here, but hot water's spraying from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Okay, so how about we just, you know, turn the taps off first? I feel like we should just, like, you know, turn the taps off. But we could just wipe the mirror as well. So you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort! You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. And maybe I should touch it first to make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Or, I don't care, I hurt myself, it's what I do. No, no, don't hurt yourself. Like, you've literally got one point of health left. I might be about to die from wiping steam off a mirror. Let's just, you know, be careful here, just in case. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. Is my tongue okay at the bare minimum? No, it's swollen and snail-like wriggling between my fingers. Okay, maybe I should just wipe the mirror, please, and... Yes, this is the face of late-stage alcoholism. That strikes me as a reasonable conclusion. Oh no, this is good news though. The horrific necktie is giving me another plus to Inland Empire, so uh, that is gonna really help me speed up the whole going bananas thing. Okay, I'm dressed enough. Let's go find my other shoe. That strikes me as a good baby's first quest. You must value privacy. The door has been locked from the inside. Okay, so... Do I have a key on me by any chance? And uh, no, I do not. Okay. Ah, hang on. The little yellow thing that was floating around over me, that was itself a skill check. So that is perception hearing. My keys are located inside my pocket. Got it, though. Uh, do I need to roll to fish them out? No, as it turns out, it's fine. I passed a perception check to locate my own keys. Good. Well done, me. Okay, so this time... Oh, there we go. I have escaped. Marvellous. 
Hello over there, I'm a horrifying mess of a human being. Let's have a chat with you. Her name is Klaasje, or okay, I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce that. I'm so sorry if you're from Scandinavia and that's pronounced very differently. I'm really, really sorry. But she's a Miss Orange disco dancer. Okay, young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. She refers to me as an officer. So turn my bloated face away from her and just keep on walking. No, 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 I'm well, that's actually really rude. I'm not going to be actively rude. I'm just going to move away. Clearly, I'm not in the mood for talking right now. Let's see what we can learn about the universe. The year is 51. The calendar says March. I mean, I'm guessing 1951, right? Or is that a bit too early for... Yeah, disco. I'm not sure. My history of disco is very poor. And there's something right here on the table. Yep, something on the table. That's right. And help myself to... Money! Money has been gained. Now, out the door, please, if we can. And I see something over there. It might well, in fact, be... Is that a shoe? I'm not sure that's a shoe. That is a shoe! I now have two shoes. Kaboom! And I'm now starting to, yes, make noises about myself. So, okay. Task complete. Find my shoe. Composure. There they both are. Two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited on your feet. Conceptualization success like two baby crocodiles. Do they fit well, by the way? Good. They're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. So, my brain's a bit of a dick to me and something red is also flashing. A gust of briny wind washes over you. Now, before we actually leave my room here, is there anything else I need to do? Because uh, the mirror is still flashing at me. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with uh, the expression. So a formidable encyclopedia check or an impossible electrochemistry check. So, uh, yes, try and figure out why I'm currently smiling using my knowledge of encyclopedias and... Uh, it belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time has passed from the failure of the revolution that for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like an ultimate uncontested way of life for our species. That's why I'm smiling, is it? Because of free market economics. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne tinted interiors and facades to suit the time. Calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. Okay, encyclopedic part of my brain. I think we need to actually have, like, you know, a chat. Though apparently this means I live in the city of Revachol. So that's nice. And the drama side of my brain says if it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Hang on, which bit? What's supposed to rhyme? Is it this bit that's supposed to rhyme? Like, Guillaume le Million? Except, hang on, does that mean Guillaume le Mignon? Is, is that how we're pronouncing? Oh god, I'm very confused. Aha! In an open-air boîte de nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen, he sang some bullshit, then he made uh, the expression. And I decided to just borrow it for some reason. Everybody loved it, maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you, maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now, only the grimace remains. Okay, how long ago was this? There was a vast ocean of time between right now and uh, the expression looking good on you or anyone. Two decades of the calendar is to be trusted. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. Right, so by looking at my smile in the mirror, I've remembered where I am and that there's been a major financial crash of some description in the last two decades and now everything's terrible. Got it! Now, white doors, I'm guessing... Yeah, I can't open those. Uh, right, you. Oh, Any chance okay. now I've actually got my uh, shoes? Uh, yeah, you know what? We'll engage you in conversation. Uh, when you say officer, do you mean police officer or military personnel? She seems perplexed by the question. Look, if you know who I am, would you please tell me? Because you're a police officer, sir. Okay. Now that makes a lot of sense. Yes. Now, are you absolutely sure about that? I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. All right, good. We've got confirmation. You've been here for three days on official police business, no less. And I'm just testing you right now. What business is that? I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. And here we go. Suggestion three. Ah, 
If I do this check and I fail it, I can't do it again. The white checks me while I can repeat if I want to. So, uh, who in their right mind would let me be an officer of the law? It's a good question. Don't be so hard on yourself. They let almost anybody be a police officer. Marvellous. Also, I could attempt the expression on her in an attempt to seduce her. I mean, I may as well give it a go. Let's try the expression. See if she's super into disco. Might get lucky and... Uh, yeah, I think I need to roll, like, for 28%. Presumably that means a 9 or above or thereabouts. So, uh, give it a go. Oh, flip. Oh, flip. Oh, flip, it actually worked. And uh, I'm a death door, bloated a goner, and still uh, does the longing ever stop. Alcohol raises testosterone levels, especially in men, she says matter-of-factly. The levels remain after the pain begins. You seek comfort. It's only natural. And she puts out her cigarettes. Oh, oh, this is looking good. Are we, are we following her? I think we're following her. Yes, we've seduced whoever this woman is. Oh, never mind. She's just wandered inside. Still, can we help ourselves to the cigarettes? No, nope. no, we cannot. We can examine it. Right, okay. Knock on the door. Do the expression again. Knock. There's no answer. And uh, you hear the shower being turned on uh, somewhere inside. And a tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everyone in the world uh, is doing something without you. Okay, but what she's doing is having a shower. Like, if we're really sad we're not having a shower, there is a shower in my apartment too. Okay, so, downstairs we've got a bunch of people. Let's start figuring stuff out, Tess. Just head round over here, double click to run. So this is Kim, bespectacled orange bomber jacket, waiting for me, potentially. And as you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. And apparently I've got a good feeling that, yeah, if something bad happened right now, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save me. So, okay, let's just shake his hand, be friendly, let's not freak him out too quickly here. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. I am, and apparently you've not actually met me before. So maybe I arrived three days ago, but I haven't actually checked in with the police as yet. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative, conceptualize. Okay, my conceptualization is not bad. 72% chance I will successfully make up a name. And... Uh-oh. Right, that's, um, that's unfortunate. Apparently the name Raphael Ambrosius Costo is not good enough. I think that's actually really good. I'm going to stick with that. I'm Raphael Ambrosius Costo now. I understand the scene is odd back, right? Oh, I'm jumping straight into a crime I'm supposed to know something about. Good, good. It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Yes, the police. I'm aware I'm a policeman. Though, by any chance, would you be able to specify what interviews you mean? At the 57th, we like to prepare an initial list of persons of interest, and then just skim the surface. Prepare the field, get to know the players. You don't do that? Maybe it's not an inter-district practice. I have not done that yet. By any chance, would you be willing to do that for me? Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Oh, this is amazing. I'm actually just having to try and blag my way through a police case. This is great. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Uh, no. No, I haven't. Sorry about that. So the body is still in the tree? Well, unless someone else has taken it, yes. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. And um, one other problem, I don't actually have a police badge, which apparently I need, so... Okay, find his vehicle, report my badge missing. Let's speak to the other people to figure out what's going on, though we'll start with uh, the manager, which I'm guessing is you, though hang on. Before we do that, we better look at all the other things first, because uh, learning stuff about the environment might make it easier to speak to him. So, speaker, connect to the radio. All right, Kim, me and you, duet, let's flip and go, yes. My Inland Empire brain wants to do karaoke right now. This is why we went for Inland Empire. This is amazing. Can we immediately just start doing it just to freak the hell out of Kim? Yes, I've actually gained a new task. Sing karaoke. Okay, I need to find something tragic to sing first, though. 
Okay, because my brain wants me to sing something tragic. Okay, I know I'm supposed to be getting the body out of the tree, but I now know there's an option to sing some karaoke. Get hold of a sad song on tape. Also, I need to play it on a boombox so I've memorized the lyrics. Okay, this is, a, this is a proper mission. Singing karaoke means preparation. Now, can I actually get round to the back in the kitchen? Door is bolted. Sign reads, kitchen reserved for personnel until 1pm. Time is definitely passing, just very slowly. Okay, hang on. A woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today's starts in a man's handwriting. That's a very astute observation, and uh, a soft purr of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Somebody is back there working. Now, presumably, as you're a guy, yeah, that means a woman works here too, so there is a woman working in the kitchen right now, so, uh, okay. Keep on keeping on, and there's, there's a thing here. What's that? That is fire extinguisher, or rather, no, it's not. It's a, it's a nosafed. I'm going to take the nosafed. Because uh, I don't like walking around uh, with just one health, to be perfectly honest. That's worrying. There we go. Healed up my health. Spot on. I'm no longer one bad decision away from death. Now, there's also something on the bar over here. A bottle of rum. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. Lick it up. How long have you been up already, says my body's electrochemistry. Pretty long. It's definitely drink o'clock. boy, It's coming back to him. I'm going to meet you halfway, brain. We're going to lick it a tiny, tiny amount. Calmly, the lieutenant looks out of the window and then you licking the tasty rum stain off the counter, but only a little, then out of the window again. I like Kim. Kim's been very good at not judging me, even when I really deserve it. What are you doing, he asks, without turning his eyes from the street outside. I am investigating this rum. And uh, we should move. Okay, so as it turns out, that wasn't great, but my body's electrochemistry wants more regardless. Maybe I should be ignoring my body's electrochemistry. I feel like it is not on my side. There's also an unconscious man here with wild pines on his shirt. Okay, so we can... Oh, okay, I can try and wake him up with a physical instrument, but maybe don't bother doing that. Instead, uh, yeah, there's some... Ah, there's some headache medicine. I do need that, but Kim, do you know who this is? And no idea, looks like he works for Wild Pines, the logistics company who owns and operates the harbour. So yeah, I'm guessing he just works nights, right? And no, actually, there's a strike going on in the harbour. There's not much to do aside from drinking and sleeping. Okay, I'm wanting to actually grab the pills here. So I've just gained some, aha, those pills are are good for my morale if I happen to need that. Good, good, good. Man in his late 20s with a thin, unimpressive beard. Okay, turns the lieutenant, not to me. Interesting. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Precinct 41. And he still doesn't know my name. As I said, I am Raphael Ambrosius Costo. Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. And there we go, we've got ourselves a phone number. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What? The Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. Alright, what do I need to do right now? So, uh, am I good? No, questions! I can do questions! So yeah, why isn't Sylvie here right now? And she went home because none of your business. Alright, he is not willing to actually speak to me. Got it. So, am I not a cop? I actually have a right to ask you some questions. Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back and because I asked her for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Right, so she was uncomfortable working with you. Gotcha. And yes, any suspicion as to who killed the guy in the tree? I don't know who killed him, I'm not the police, that's your job. Okay, 
Can you at least confirm you didn't? And what are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him. Okay, fair enough. But then again, that's precisely what someone who had killed him would say. Okay, task completed, some XP. Let's move on to the body here. Ah, small issue. I owe him money for the whole trashed hotel room thing, but um, apparently my necktie wants to get involved in this situation. I'm so glad I took Inland Empire. So the necktie wants to just bail on my responsibilities. Uh, what's real right now? Savoir faire, I am not very good at. You don't do that once. Does anybody know what's real and what isn't? Oh, as in like the money, not as in what's real. Okay, yes, yes, sorry, I got confused there. I'm actually slightly bananas. But tell me, my good sir, what exactly is money? And what are you, a philosopher? Yes, to be honest, I've really been struggling with some basic concepts of reality today. And money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. <laughs> ah, marvellous. Absolutely flipping marvellous. And, okay, I found some coins earlier. Are these money? Yes. Yes, they are. So that's 10, 10, 20, 40. Okay, I've paid off some of my debt. Consider that a down payment. No, you see, that's 40 cents. Cents are a form of currency 100 times smaller than the real. <laughs> Okay, I'm not even going to take this. Come back when you have 130 real. Okay, so uh, that's that's a lot of money I apparently owe. This is marvellous. Like, normally in a game, your character just sort of knows stuff. I like being a character who literally in-universe knows nothing. Officer, maybe you're better off working from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. I don't know where my house is, Kim. And, officer, you really need to take this up with the station. I have a shortwave radio on my car. Good. Good, good, good. I can report the missing badge, ask if anyone happens to know what address my paycheck gets sent to, maybe ask if I can get an advance on said paycheck. Everything will be great. Okay, that's everything in here. Let's get outside and start doing the crime. Or like, the opposite of crime. Solving the crime. Here we go. The whirling in rags, a statue that's sort of falling apart, a bunch of people. That's the strike. Right there, we know about that business. Okay. Let's, for the time being, focus on the thing I'm supposed to be focusing on. So we said, uh, go out to the door, turn right, look for hole in fence. There is hole in fence. Absolutely marvellous. And uh, there's no point interviewing the local people because uh, we know for a fact that, yeah, please stop throwing stones at the bloody body. We know for a fact that, yeah, that body's been up there for a good uh, seven days. So the fact someone's around here now does not mean they know anything or saw anything. Alright, so not sure what language they're actually speaking here, but you need to stop doing that and naff off. Right in the dick, Kuno! Get him right in the dick! Okay, you know what? I can no longer cast any aspersions on this kid, because in how many videos have I shot someone in the dick and then commented on how I just shot them in the dick? Alright, I have no moral high ground here, whatsoever. Okay, after much swearing and nothing coherent, yeah. The crime scene. Any chance you actually play in this yard, you know, regularly? Like, say, seven days ago, when you might have actually seen something? Right, pig, this is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. Flip, do you want with it? Okay, hang on. Hang on. What's, what's Kuno? I thought you were Kuno. And Kuno's Kuno, pig. The boy points to his chest with both thumbs. Okay. He is Kuno, he just refers to himself in the third person. The flip are you calling a third person? Kuno's the flippin' first person. Yeah, I feel like we're not gonna get much intelligence out of this kid. Okay, now the kids are starting to scream about how I'm grabbing them and I'm planning to rape them just to make a scene. You know what? How about we just back off? We're clearly not gonna get anything useful here, so just back off for the time being. And apparently the entire charade was about establishing dominance over you. You backing off means he succeeded. Yeah, but I wasn't just going to, like, hit a kid for being an asshole. That would definitely not have been the right thing to try and do. So, uh, all right, fine. We're just not going to get anything good out of this kid. Now, with empathy, I could figure out what the hell was going on with the kid. But that's a very, very difficult check. And my empathy isn't spectacular. And also I backed down so he doesn't respect me. So uh, that's not gonna fly. I mean, uh, we can give it a go. I might get lucky and roll a double six. Then I would just actually happen to pass. Plus it's white, not red. So uh, see if we get lucky. Uh, no. 
a nine. Not bad, but not good enough. Okay, he doesn't seem to know anything whatsoever. Nothing useful there. Let's just be off and go and investigate the body ourselves. And also, yeah, maybe something inside this here greenhouse. Someone's trying to grow herbs. Nothing particularly of use there. We do, however, have, yeah, some stuff right here. Hello. Close by to the body, there's uh, something on the ground. Perception, sight. There are some footprints left by work boots. Anywhere from six to 12 pairs have walked here, but that doesn't mean any of them did it, to be perfectly honest. That doesn't mean a thing. It's been seven days. Uh, this is, well, is this public property? It's around the back of a hotel, so uh, people might have just come uh, to look at the body on their way to calling the police, but... I do have an even chance of solving this with visual calculus. Let's actually get an exact number here. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I just got to fail. And uh, my morale has also dropped because I'm failing checks. Gotcha. Any chance I know what sort of boots? Heavy workers boots, reinforced toes and hobnails. Fine. Probably the striking workers that were mentioned a minute ago. Now, what else have we got around over here? One box right by the greenhouse. Have a look, see? That is, aha, some stuff. I'll be taking stuff. And I'll also, yeah, heal up my uh, morale, just in case that's, you know, a thing that you want to have. Uh, what is that up there, by the way? There's something going on there. A winch mechanism oxidizing for some years. All right, and uh, some form of blocked up door that apparently I can, like, interact with. Okay, inconspicuous pile of roofing materials. And uh, what am I looking at here? Nothing. Uh, someone just left some roofing materials slanted against an old shack. And why am I looking at this? I mean, it's white. I'll give it a go, see if I get lucky. And I do. Beautiful. You know what? This is just a little bit too orderly. Pull the panels aside. And what have we got here then? And... All right, they were just hiding a door. Gained experience, plus five. A shabby little door. Presumably just a tool shed or something, but it's very close by to the crime scene, so uh, go on. Nip inside. Okay, couple of things around here and just a couple of points of interest. So uh, start figuring this out here. A silver plate with traces of bone yellow powder. And my brain is thinking about that. Be still, my beating heart. It's, oh, it's drugs. Okay, do you want me to lick the plate by any flipping chance? Let's try and keep things professional here. Someone has clearly taken drugs here. I don't know if that's actually a crime in this universe, but I'm just going to mention it to Kim, and then I'm going to not lick the plate. Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. Uh, however, ladder in the corner. Okay, it's probably another way into the industrial harbour now, a secret path the kids use. Okay, so apparently there's a way into the harbour. Remember that, we might need to go into the harbour later. So a cured pig's head, together with a poster saying, get out of the way or get flipped up. We know about that right there. And uh, what is this? If I can actually reach it, it's in yellow. I can, I get myself 40 cents. Beautiful. And yes, indeed, this gets me up top. So that is potentially of use. And also, any chance I can help myself to uh, this here jacket. How do I get up top here? We're going up somewhere. There we go. There is a path up and up here. And oh, policeman cloak. So, okay. It's a little bit weirdly close by to a crime scene. Pay attention to it. It's probably yours. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Oh, maybe I did it. That'd be a good twist. You might be able to make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your life. I'm not convinced. That's a that's a 17% right there. Um, do you really think that's mine? And also, uh, yeah, what exactly are we doing up here? What are we doing? We're awfully close to breaking into the industrial harbour. They're bound to have information for us. I thought that was our intention. Well, we might be doing that. I don't know. Okay, so apparently it would be a bit dangerous to jump for this, but not too dangerous. He says, uh, yeah, two meters tops, which is uh, not so bad. Screw it! 17%! Roll for that double six! And I'm probably about to badly injure myself, aren't I? I'm about to slam my face into something. No! I changed my mind at the last minute. 
you know what? Fair enough. Fair or flip enough. But I've decided I can't do it right now. I'll make the jump next time. And I did damage my health there. That's a shame. Right. Be careful. Can't afford to do that again. Now, by any chance, can I actually, yeah, get round to here or anything? I do not think I actually can. There's no, yeah, there's no way to actually get over here. But there is something right there. Hello, thing on the ground. Oh, money. Precious, precious free money. And also one box on the way back down, which is, oh, plus one health. That is precisely what I need. I am now no longer about to die. Okay, back in the backyard over here, there's something right over here. The letter R wears a crown on a ribbon below, a light above descending. Okay, but I need to have a think about that. That's the logo of the municipality of Revachol. Okay, I happen to know that. Good. Let's get over to the tree here. Have a chat to the tree. Kid's ladder is rickety, but still climbable. Oh, I'm going to regret doing this. Have a quick think. The ladder's for kids. It wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. Okay, so in theory, if I wanted to say deputise these kids... Oh, hang on, he's... He's now sitting down on the ground as opposed to throwing stones. Has something just changed? Also, uh, yes, you. No! And he's getting up to... Oh, he was just getting more stones. Fair enough. Right, let's just see if we can bring the body down without needing to climb the ladder, because I'm not feeling good about the ladder, but see what we can do here. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. So, uh, yeah. Sadly, I cannot avoid throwing up that easily because my endurance is poor. Yeah, this is smelling really bad, like... Is it worse than a normal corpse? Is this something we should be paying attention to? Uh, active decay. The lieutenant raises a white piece of linen to his nose. Uh, it's okay to throw up, officer. No one is judging. And the kids are also about to judge me for that. But honestly, uh, there's not much I can do. I'm just going to, yeah, fail that check and presumably, therefore, vomit immediately afterwards. Unless I happen to get very lucky. Uh, nope. No, I do not. And there we go. I've been nice and sick under the corpse there. Fair enough, to be honest. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. Okay, is that from the general store you mentioned? And there's a frit nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't, point to the greenhouse. Okay, Interesting. So, potentially I need to do that first before we can actually get the corpse down. Yeah, I think the only way to actually get the corpse down at this point is uh, to pass that check without throwing up. But I can't do it again till my endurance goes up. So, ammonia would be a modifier for plus endurance. Gotcha. Here we go. Freet, whatever that is precisely. And uh, three T's. How idiomatic. So, uh, these guys might be able to sell me some modifiers. Okay, shopkeeper in a fabulous hat. Ammonia, if you'd be so kind. Okay, so there is some somewhere, and yeah, there we go. Now it's showing up. A single real for that. I'm pretty sure I've got a real, so I shall buy that. Kaboom. Oh, and here's fun. There's a raincoat inside the knickknack stand. So, okay, if I could get myself four reals, and apparently I've got two right now, I could buy the raincoat. Okay. So, yeah, it's a raincoat. There we go. That's pretty cheap. And that is a, a permanent plus one to endurance. That's got to be a good thing. I will be right back for that. Here we go. 60 cents on the floor. We're making fast progress here. Oh, flip. There's 158 in the back of this lorry. Boom. That is my money now. There might be even more inside this box. Yes, certain video game things always work. Always go through boxes. Also, white tank top plus one to physical instrument. Okay, so if I need to beat some people up, that will be good for that business. And I will be having that raincoat, please. Kaboom. Right, so the shirt can either give me, yeah, a bonus to conceptualization at a cost of suggestion, or the white tank top purely plus one to physical instrument. We'll do without that, but hang on. Does this go on my... Yeah, that's my jacket. So I'm taking away whatever that is in order to give myself an endurance. Yeah, 
I feel like giving myself an endurance, not a bad idea right now, given we have to deal with the corpse. So wearing a raincoat while dealing with the decomposing corpse, good call. And even better, that bonus endurance gets me plus one to my health. Love it. Okay, so I've got myself a couple of attempts here because I can try it again now because I've got endurance plus one. If that fails, I can use the ammonia to get it up to plus two, one from the coat, one from the ammonia, and try a second time. So we should now be in good shape. So uh, this is 17%. Plus one, ah, plus one has ammonia, even with the raincoat. I mean, we've got to give it a go and... Okay, got flipping lucky there, marvellous. So, time to inspect the victim's body, and uh, he's certainly dressed a bit on the uh, the odd side. Yeah, the boots, they seem to be standing out a bit. They're kind of uh, bulging or something. So, material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast, the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Okay, ceramic boots. That's a bit on the odd side. Now my logic says that's not boots, that's armour, part of a larger set, which clearly he's not wearing. Okay, I'm willing to say that out loud. And indeed, he starts writing that down. And technically, these are sabatons, not boots. Okay, tell me more, Kim. Ceramic plate, zirconium dioxide most likely, this is where the make would be. And okay, under the heel, Fairweather, and Fairweather model. Right, so uh, he's doing a good job. He's a much better detective than me. And as for the rest of it, probably just scavenged by the locals. So when he was actually hung up here, or when he hung himself, we don't actually know what happened. Uh, yeah, there's a good chance he was wearing a full suit of some type of armour. Okay, let's go to the next most important thing here. Yeah, big ceramic armour. That's presumably expensive, right? And that's for us to find out. My initial report on the area says he was a security guard for a harbour company. Okay, maybe in this weird universe ceramic armour is just a thing. But do these look a bit, you know, advanced for just a security guard? And uh, I agree, no, this is way beyond what the guard can afford. Interesting. So in which case, yeah, let's try and just gently pull a boot off, if we can. This feels dangerous, are you sure? I mean, we'll give it a go. Hopefully we're not about to, like, you know, pull his leg off or something. Please don't pull his leg off. And stop. Okay, he does not want me to do that. And yeah, I might be about to literally pull him apart because he's decomposing. Bit of an issue. Okay, so yeah, after seven days, the neck is going to literally just break apart. And we need the body for the autopsy. So for the time being, we cannot remove the shoes. And let's not say we want to wear or sell the shoes. Let's say, you know, clues, because that's literally our job. And maybe we should concentrate on what's outside the boot and leave what's inside to the boys at processing just this once. And there's no way you're getting them off. All the organic matter in his body has been flowing down into the boots. They're fused to his feet. Ah, so uh, the body's sort of uh, liquefying and it's cold. So uh, frozen, expanded, uh, fused to boots. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a mess to get off. Gotcha. You're sure there's a way to peel them off, but first the body would need to be down. And second, uh, might be better if the lieutenant wasn't around. Marvellous. Marvellous, marvellous, marvellous. You know what? We'll keep it as an option just to see what's going on. And a bit more investigation gets us, yeah, one more number written on the boots, some form of reference number. Good, good, good. And yeah, with the make and the number, we can now start cross-referencing, get ourselves, presumably, the person who bought the armour. Okay, next up, we got ourselves, yeah, some tattoos or something around his shoulders and upper torso. There we go, Kim takes a photo, we've got a little bit of a better look at the body here, so, uh, yeah. Whatever's going on with those tattoos, we do not recognise them as yet. Okay, so we've got that photo. We need to show it around, figure out what the tattoos meant. So, uh, the belt, presumably, uh, yeah, how he's actually uh, hanging right now. So the hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Okay, what can we learn about that? This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt. Like, say, they might use uh, 
in a harbour, which we now have a back way into, uh, thanks to that little shack. So yeah, reasonable assumption, the dock workers from the harbour probably would have been the ones to have access to this material. The brief suggested as much, politically motivated by the ongoing strike. Did you not get the briefing? Um, to be honest, no, my past has undergone total annihilation. Oh, but here's where things get good for my character. So, we've got ourselves an inland empire check here. And apparently, I need to start just imagining what happened to this man based on his dead eyes. So go on then. Let's flip and give this a go. How did you just fail Inland Empire? That's the one thing you're good at. Okay, preliminary investigation done. Now I need to get him down. That's actually enough XP to level up too. Beautiful. So, how are we going to get him down when we know that what's hanging him up is, a yeah, incredibly strong reinforced something, something, something. And the only way to get up there is a ladder that won't support the weight of a man. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither of us can reach the belt without assistance. Even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strength material. So, uh, yeah, why not just saw the branch? That seems like a good idea. And climb up there and saw the branch. Does seem dangerous, but all we need to do is really get, like, you know, a ladder and a saw. It's not that bad, really. Yeah, the harbour. They would logically have some form of, like, scaffolding or something for dealing with large containers. We might be able to use some of that. I was hoping we wouldn't. The Union appears to be suspects in this case. Seems like a dangerous route to go down. Ah, yes, of course. There's some form of strike going on with Union, scabs, etc. Possibly, this guy was killed for being a suspected scab. Now, just in theory, though it sounds ridiculous, could I actually shoot him down? By, yeah, shooting where the buckle ties the rope to the branch. That would be a good spot to aim. So, uh, yeah, that point right there, my visual calculus is pretty good. So we could try that, but, uh, yeah, let's actually just back off for the moment. What else have we got? You know what, let's just try the shooting him down thing first, except, oh, the body might just, yeah, like, you know, pop when it hits the ground. But there is the whole issue with the Union and the Harbour. We don't actually need to tell them. We could just go and get some help. But then again, what are we actually doing there? You know what? Let's try and shoot him down. If we can do this ourselves, we're going to do it. So try and shoot him down, Kim. Do what you can. And wait, let me try. No, do not give me a gun. Seriously. Just don't. Lieutenant, give it a go. Come on, Lieutenant. And he produces a lightweight firearm. If you need to, step back. Don't hit him. Please don't hit him. And do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, okay. He's doing a proper position here. Now, easy does it. And what did you actually just uh, hit there? Steps back. And misses. But he didn't blow up the corpse. So that's good. I mean, let's give it a go. Just in theory, if you gave me the gun. <laughs> oh, dear. Go ahead. I'm not stopping you. Just don't hit the victim. And you only have one gun. I do, you know. I flipping do. And, oh, please tell me the gun's about to start talking to me. And, Jay, you know, I've lost my cloak and my badge. Also lost my gun. It's out there somewhere. It's fine. Okay, let's examine the gun, feel the weight, etc. Nice light gun. That's good. Shut up, Kuno. And we're going to make this happen. I assume there's going to be a check for this, right? And, oh, 17%. Okay, try closing my left eye. That's got to be good, right? Yep, visual calculus. This is going well here. Plus one, 28%. I mean, I could, I could just point the gun at the Adoy kids. <laughs> Don't do that. And if I say shut up, they're going to actually do even more. I mean, we're going to give it a go. We're going to give it a go. We got a 25% odd chance. So come on, none or above. And please don't hit the body. I just shot the body. Oh no, that's, that's definitely bad. I definitely just shot him in the stomach. I am, oh... Oh no. Oh, that's... that's not good. Okay, time to go to the harbour and ask for help. Because I'm guessing the body can't take too many more bullets from me. And yeah, the individual we're looking for is apparently 
Everett Clare. So, okay, we'll go find that person, and we've got a secret way in already. Ah, yes, of course, but to get in, I need to actually get down to this point over here. So to do that, I'm going to be needing more savoir faire, and I think I might be able to do that right now. I've got myself, yeah, some skill points. Good. You know what? We'll give it a go. I do actually want to have a cloak, and yeah, it looks like because I've only got Moterix at level 2... I can only put two points into that skill. So yeah, how high your primary attribute is affects how much you can invest into derived skills. Gotcha. Okay, we're going to try this again. Oh, it's still 28%. I'm still probably going to completely mess this up, but we've got to give it a go. And try it, try it, try it, try it, try it. I don't like the look of that there red thing. I think red means bad. I think I'm going to fluff it again. And I'm going to fluff it again. Yeah, till I can actually pull off that jump, I can't get in that way, so that's not gonna fly. We still need to actually talk our way in somehow. I like how I'm sufficiently mad that I can just go up to mail delivery boxes and patch them. That's marvellous. Also, the mail delivery box seems happy, so I'm glad I did that. Okay, let's figure out what's going on with this hair strike. So you, my good man, you're important and highlight yourself in green when I'm holding down tab, which means uh, you matter. Bastards! We have a right to work! Okay, so yeah, who are you? What's going on? Pull up and stay frosty, everyone! Cops are here! Aha, uh -huh. so these guys here are the scabs. Gotcha. Here to fuck with us? Be the honest worker down? Uh, to be honest, no. Not really. In the slightest. Just here to investigate a bit. We're here to fight for a cause. Strikes usually have problems with people who have causes. To be honest, no. But, like, if you have a ladder, I'll be on your side. I'm just after someone with a ladder and a saw. That's it. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work. Right to work. All right. He doesn't seem that useful to me. Okay, so I can't do anything there. But what we need to do is, yeah, find a way to loopy roundy. So, okay. We got ourselves, yeah, this is just below where I was before. There's a door here but I do not have any way to open that just yet, so I can't get through that way. Okay, who's up top here? Aha! Right, so those guys are the scabs down there. I'm guessing you, therefore, are the union leader who's locked down the harbour so no one's allowed to work. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. I wouldn't have phrased it like that, but he's not wrong. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Your friend, however, is very annoying. Okay, before we do anything, size him up a bit, figure out what we're dealing with here. Are oh, you admiring my moral physiology? It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this Asial Pinacle. Be calm and sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. I'm going to begin using the expression be calm ham sandwich on a daily basis. Look, my horrendous ham sandwich body is irrelevant. I need to get into the harbour, please. That is precise. The negligence that has led you to succumb to Beirut. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Beirut emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. I'm just going to refer to my partner here. Kim, is it really that bad? It's not good. Oh, Kim's on his side. You know what? You're right. I'm an alcoholic. Doesn't change the fact I need a body out of a tree. No, you don't. You need to get another thing. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving up the idea. The influence of the Ham sandwich raise is rain. Okay, that was an interesting series of words to put into a sentence. And no, actually, I think the ham sandwich race shall rise again. Willingly calling yourself a ham sandwich. How far the Occidental Hablo group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. Hey, there's nothing not noble about ham sandwiches. I love a good ham sandwich. Everybody loves a ham sandwich. 
Okay, with my conceptualization, which is very, very good indeed, I can subscribe to his advanced race theory involving ham sandwiches. And that might win him over. There we go. Measurehead, tell me more about ham sandwiches. Okay, there are three categories of race. The heroic racers, the servile racers, and the vile C to F race cauldron of pederasty. Oh, this is, this is going to all sorts of good places, I can feel it. Oh, who would have thought it? By a ridiculous, marvellous coincidence, in this guy's race superiority theory, the race that he is, is actually one of the superior heroic ones. What a cocking surprise! Okay, so having listened to him going on for a very long time, I've now gained a thought about advanced race theory, and I now have a new task. I need to figure out what is the race enigma. If I can figure out what the race enigma is, according to his wacky worldview, then he'll open up the harbour for me. And would you believe, no, I can't just knock him unconscious. Then again, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I do have a shirt that makes me better at knocking people unconscious. Also, I grabbed some gloves from a passing person that gives me plus one to interfacing. I don't even know what interfacing is, but I'm now better at it. In fact, wait, hang on. No, no. The best option is to try and knock him unconscious without the shirt. And then if we get lucky, I'm about to fail miserably. Yep, that was, that was just embarrassing. That was just embarrassing in general. Okay, so this is how thoughts work now. When I actually have thoughts, I can put them into slots in my head. At which point, a certain amount of in-game time has to pass, but in-game time passes really slowly. Like, it's still only like lunchtime, and we started this morning. So it's going to take me four and a half hours of in-game time to sort out that guy who I stole a smile off. That's going to give me minus one logic while I'm doing it, but it might give me something. Might give me something good. Alternatively, yeah, temporary research bonus. Lonesome, long way home. May as well try and internalize that. And uh, that's going to take 1 hour 40, but it's going to reduce my drama because it seems absurd to me. Well, we may as well try and do it. I mean, if I can't find another solution, that means in an hour 40, I'll be able to come back to him, tell him whatever it is he wants to hear, and we'll get in. Okay, I was looking around for another way into the harbour, but I couldn't help but come across this rather gorgeous police mobile here, and the radio. I report him a badge missing, that's a big old pile of XP, meaning I can level up again. Beautiful. Okay, I am going to make this bloody jump, and I've realised part of the problem. My savoir faire is being reduced by two because of my items. I am right at this moment wearing trousers that reduce my savoir faire. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to take those off. We're also going to take my shoes off. And I'm not sure I've actually got any. Actually, you know, I think I found some jeans somewhere. Yes, jeans give me electrochemistry. Apparently these are jeans that are good for drinking for some reason. And I'm pretty sure I picked a hat out of the bin too. Reaction speed up. Sure. Why not? Oh, I look dreadful, but whatever. I've got no actual, um, no actual shoes. Right, so... That's better. This is all better, regardless, all right? This is all good. Now my savoir faire is much, much better. What is my chance to succeed? And locked. I need to actually... Oh, I need to literally put points into it. Okay, well, that's fine. I've got points to invest into this. Screw you. I'm going to make this happen. Plus two basic, plus two learnt, no negatives. I check the shop. There's no items. This is as good as I can flipping get. Okay, we're going to make this bloody... There we go. 72%. You better flipping make this. You better flipping... Yes, that's green! That's green! I've actually made it! Hooray for me! Uh-oh. Okay, I've made it about two-thirds of the way. At the bare minimum, I'm gonna make it onto the concrete. I suspect something bad might be about to happen. I can close my eyes and let my senses take in the world around me, or continue my voyage. I'm going to... Close your eyes is probably a bad idea. I'm going to keep my eyes open, actually, and... Did we just get hurt in any way? And... Uh, all right. I'm feeling good, actually. And with that, I have finally got my cloak. This thing better be good, by the way. Okay. Not bad, actually. Not bad at all. So, which... What slot is it for? It fills my jacket slot. 
So I'm using that in place of, uh, yeah, Endurance. That gives me bonus two shivers and all right, fine. You know what? Whatever, it's cool. I'm going to put my shoes back on at this point too. I have finally made my way into the bloody place. Yes, I am thrilled. All right, so we made it in here and we're looking for the boss man, aren't we? And hang on, before we go any further, the stuff here. Yeah, free healing items of varying descriptions. Let's just get myself up to full health here. Oh, I think we found it. A container. This is our man. Oh, yeah. That's the boss man right there. Right. You, my good man. I need you to, like, help me get a body down out of a tree. Not sure why you specifically could do it, but anyway. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsaragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Dubois Union here in Martinet. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Garte. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Oh, Flip, did you just give me a giant pile of money? If you just gave me a giant pile of money, I am 100% on board with you. Thank you very much. Don't mention it, but also don't forget it. Okay, seriously, let's focus on the dead body situation. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. Jean, please take it easy with the race science. Ah, I'm guessing that's the guy we spoke to previously. Good, 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 good. And of course, we would like to speak to him about the murder, but he won't do it unless I actually do something... For him, you want a door to be opened and then just left unlocked just to send a message that the police are on your side in this one. Well, we can come back to you, Everard. For now, I can't need to get that body out of the tray, okay? Here we go, Mr. Measurehead. Now, I know for a fact your boss just told you to help us out. You surmounted the harbour wall in a display of athletic prowess to reach my superior, then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning. I will remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. All right, then. There we go. Not bad for a ham sandwich. Ah, but problem. The only way he's going to do it is if we stay here to guard the button. So uh, there's a chance he could interfere with the corpse in some way to remove evidence. Admittedly, whatever he does, it's not going to be as bad as the fact I've literally just shot the corpse. So sure, go on then. Ah. And I may also have just been slightly tricked here, because I'm guarding the button, all the scabs down below are assuming I'm working for Everart, okay? There we go, Measurehead is back, and of course, the corpse is now down on the ground. And there we go, one body just left lying right here in the backyard. And that is enough to level up and get me a skill point too. And thus, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, it has taken me pretty much a full day in in-game time, which is about, yeah, two or three hours of real time, in order to get up, get dressed, walk to the backyard, and get a corpse out of a tree. 10 out of 10, game of the year. And as I consider whether I want to invest my skill points into volition or visual calculus, I think you get the point, ladies and gentlemen. This here is Disco Elysium, and if you want a hardcore, and I mean really flipping hardcore, and slightly weird, and I mean really, really rather weird old school RPG, this might well be worth a look -see. It's certainly unique. It's very, very unique indeed, but it's big and interesting and detailed, and clearly a huge, huge amount of thought has been put into it to try and make this a really interesting world with 10 million different ways that you can interact with people and things and diddly diddly dee. It's all very, very interesting indeed and does take me back to that golden age in the late 90s when top-down isometric hardcore RPGs were the big thing. Oh, happy, happy times. May those days one day return. We might well see some of this again. This could be fun to do a little bit more of. We'll see. I'll keep an eye on how the video does. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd and this has been Disco Elysium. Thank you very much and goodbye. No, sadly, I cannot be the Santa Claus of murder tonight. So apparently, even though this thing is... Oh, no, no, you can't. No, you most certainly can't. Okay. Is that the symbol meaning I'm about to pull her over? Yep, there we are. There we... Oh! I 
feel like she didn't necessarily survive that. No, she's very dead. 